In this video, we will multiply and divide uh, numbers in the powers of 10 representation, and we'll finish with some astronomy examples. Uh, so our first rule would be that uh, the powers, the exponents of the 10 base, those powers of 10 will add when the numbers are multiplied. So let's uh, pick 40 times 20. If we do that on a calculator or in our head, we would come up with 800. What does this look like if we uh, do the process using scientific notation? Well, the 40 would be 4 times 10 to the first power. There's one factor of 10 in 40. The 20 would be 2 times 10 to the first power. And we can rearrange multiplication. We have four factors here to multiply, the 4, 10 to the first, 2, and another 10 to the first. I'm going to choose to group the 4 times the 2 in the first uh, operation I'll perform, and then 10 to the first times 10 to the first in the second. Well, 4 times 2, that's an 8. 10 to the first times 10 to the first. We have the same base here. The base is 10, so we're allowed to add the exponents, and we get 1 plus 1 is 2. 8 times uh, 10 squared, that is the representation of 800. Or with a little bigger uh, uh, powers of 10, bigger numbers, 6 times 10 to the 18th multiplied by 3 times 10 to the 11th. Again, I'm going to rearrange this just for convenience on paper here <clears throat> to uh, 6 times 3 and then 10 to the 18th times 10 to the first power. Again, we can rearrange those factors in any order because they're all multiplications. Though the 6 times 3 it gives us 18. 10 to the 18th, 10 to the 11th, same base of 10. I can add the exponents. 18 plus 11 produces 29. And then to become more standard uh, notation here, uh, move the decimal place in between the 1 and the 8. So 1.8, when I move the decimal place to the left, I make their power of 10 one number bigger. So we go to 10 to the 30th. Now, doing this on a calculator and not... Uh, promoting any one brand of calculator, but this one seems to work conveniently for these scientific notation calculations. We would key in the number down here, and then when we want to enter the power of 10, I'd press EE. -E. Uh, your calculator may have EXP on it, um, or you may have a calculator where you have to put in 10, and then the up arrow, and then the power of 10. I hope not. Um, for these calculations and this level of uh, astronomy and physics, introductory level, I don't feel you need a graphing calculator. In fact, uh, they're sometimes uh, too uh, difficult to operate for students to get the right answer. So I've uh, always had better success with students using a simple calculator. This is about $9 in a store in the United States. Um, but uh, I'm not going to use it on this uh, uh, video here. Just wanted to show that's available. Um, okay, into division. So 40 divided by 2, well, 20 goes into 42 times. If we write this with the uh, scientific notation, 40 becomes 4 times 10 to the first, 20 becomes 2 times 10 to the first. Again, I'm going to group and do the division of 4 divided by 2 separately from the division of 10 to the first divided by 10 to the first. So 4 divided by 2, that gives me a 2. I'm not writing anything here. I, I could put in uh, times 10 to the 0 power. The exponents do subtract. So 1 minus 1, the exponent in the denominator gets subtracted from the number that's in the exponent of the numerator. Or you can see that these are identities. 10 to the first divided by 10 to the first would just be a factor of 1. Uh, so we get a 2. With bigger numbers, bigger exponents, 6 times 10 to the 18th, 3 times 10 to the 11th, group the 6 divided by 3 separately from 10 to the 18th divided by 10 to the 11th, 6 divided by 3 is a 2, 10 to the 18th divided by 10 to the 11th, we subtract 11 from 18, I subtract the uh, exponent in the denominator from the exponent in the numerator, I end up with 2 times 10 to the 7th. And perhaps you should pause the video and try these with your calculator. Welcome back. Let's take a look at some astronomy examples and do a few comments on the scale of the universe, uh, part of the universe. Mass of the Earth divided by mass of the Moon. Which do you think has the more mass, the Moon or the Earth? 
Well, we'll look it up in a table. And uh, these tables are available on the internet. Uh, I I picked this one up uh, from uh, NASA. Did a Google search site colon nasa.gov space planetary data. And uh, here's the web address where this is coming from. But you can do Google searches and find uh, lots of data at NASA sites. But mass of the Earth, 5.97, 10 to the 24th kilograms. Mass of the Moon, 7.3 times 10 to the 22nd kilograms. We, to make a good comparison here, we need kilograms and kilograms for both masses. If we do the 5.97 divided by 7.3, I get 0.82. And doing the powers of 10 division, I've got 24 in the numerator power, 22 in the denominator. I subtract those. I get a square, or 10 squared, a 2 in the exponent. And then if I apply this to the 0.82 to get to a number without scientific notation, I have a positive 2. I move the decimal place to the right two places when I get rid of the times 10 to the power of 2. And 82. We find that the Earth actually has about, I've rounded off here, about 82 times more mass than the Moon. The Earth is more massive than the Moon by a factor of 82. However, if you study astronomy, you'll discover that our Moon, the Moon of the Earth, is relatively very large compared to the masses of. Uh, you know, Jupiter to one of its moons, or the mass of Saturn to one of its moons. Um, our system is more comparable, more equal masses. Not equal. Earth has 82 times more. Uh, but let's continue. What about the, uh, I'll call it the radius of the moon's orbit and the Earth's orbit. How do they compare? And the radius is in quote here because these orbits are not circles. They are not circles. They're ellipses, but sort of an average uh, distance of the moon away from the Earth and the average distance of the moon away from of the Earth away from the sun. So here's our number for the moon: 3.84 times 10 to the fifth kilometers. The Earth: 1.49 times 10 to the six times 10 to the six kilometers. That's the average distance away from the sun. Um, and I might as well go ahead and, and throw this in here. Uh, one astronomical unit, 1.149.6 times 10 to the 6 kilometers. One astronomical unit. It's uh, a handy scale for doing solar system calculations. I won't do that today. Um, but we divide these two numbers. Obviously, the one on top is smaller. I get 0 0.00257. I almost left out one of the zeros after the decimal, but 0 0.00257. Or in scientific notation, we'd have to move the decimal point three places to the right to get the 2.57. When we move the decimal place to the right, that creates a negative power of 10, so times 10 to the minus 3. And it's this representation perhaps isn't as meaningful. What would happen if we do the calculation of Earth orbit radius divided by Moon orbit radius? <coughs> well, we don't have to do the whole thing again. If this is on your calculator, just uh, invoke the 1 over x calculation. And what we find is that uh, roughly, approximately, the size of the Earth's orbit is 390 times the size of the Moon's orbit. And so when you see scale drawings of the solar system, they're probably not to scale. <coughs> they probably have, uh, if you can see the moon's orbit and the Earth orbit on the same page, um, it's not quite a true scale drawing. Uh, the moon is tucked into the Earth. Well, that has to be because the, uh, uh, the gravity of the Earth is limited in how strong it is over, over a span. When we get to the gravity calculation, we'll actually find that the pull of the sun on the moon is about two times larger than the gravity pull of the Earth on the moon. Uh, the moon is really orbiting the sun. The Earth influences the path of the, of, uh, the moon's uh, motion around the sun. But uh, here we are. If we would say the moon does orbit the Earth and the Earth's orbiting the sun, uh, we get this small number for the size of the moon's orbit compared to the Earth's orbit. If we do the invert inversion calculation, Earth orbit size divided by Moon orbit size, 
Um, the Earth's orbit is 390 times larger than the Moon's orbit. Okay, light year, common uh, distance unit in astronomy. We can find the distance of the light year. The light year is not a time unit, it's a distance unit. And we get that by the rate, the speed of light, multiplied by the length of time. Well, for the light year, we use the speed of light, I'm approximating here, 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. So slightly less than that, but close enough. This is the number of seconds in a year. You can look that up in a table of constants. I multiply those two, we get 9.468 times 10 to the 15 meters, a huge number of meters, a, a thousand trillion meters, um, almost 10,000 trillion meters. If you use a more accurate value for the speed of light, then you get 9.461 times 10 to the 15 meters, or slightly different. Um, how, how far does light travel in one minute? Well, again, I'm going to use this approximation for the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. 60 seconds is obviously one minute. I do need to have seconds and seconds here. I can't multiply by one minute and get some answer. Uh, the time units will not cancel. So I need to write minutes in terms of 60 seconds. Multiply those, well, 3 times 60, that would be 180. And then we have our 10 to the 8th. I'm going to move the decimal point two places to the left, 1.8. When I move the decimal place to the left, I make the exponent larger. I move twice, I make it uh, larger by 2. I add 2 to 8, I get 1.8 times 10 to the 10th meters. If I'd rather write this in kilometers, let's do a unit conversion. 1 kilometer is 10 to the 3rd meters. Kilo is a factor of 10 to the 3. Kilometer is a bigger unit. We need 1,000 of the small units of meters to match 1 kilometer. Now I have 10 to the 10th divided by 10 to the 3rd. We subtract powers, uh, the exponent numbers, and we get 1.8 times 10 to the 7th kilometers. That's how far light travels in one minute. Well, let's compare this to the uh, Earth's average distance from the sun. So from above, the average distance of the Earth from the sun, 149.6 times 10 to the 6 kilometers. Here's our distance that light travels in one minute, so I'm putting this as a uh, speed here, kilometers per minute. 1.8 times 10 to the 7 kilometers for one minute. The kilometers cancel. I get uh, units of minutes when we're left here, and it turns out to be 8.3. Again, you ought to pause and do this calculation on your calculator. Key in 149.6, press the double E button, press 6, press divide. Key in 1.8, double E, 7, push equals. That's the way it works on the brand of calculator I, uh, I showed you earlier. Your calculator may operate differently. Uh, practice with some simple numbers till you figure out what keys you have to press to do calculations with scientific notation. This practice will pay off big time if your uh, course continues to use large and small numbers and uses calculations with them but takes light about 8.3 minutes from the photosphere, from the outer layer of the sun, uh, kind of an outer layer, <laughs> the part that we can see, the photosphere. So there you are, keep practicing, ask your instructor questions if you have them.